All right, folks, so this week we're going to kick off the courses with Tim Parkinson, who's going to give us a demo of Teams from a working technician's point of view. Welcome, Tim. Hey, Lisa, how you doing? Good. Hi, well, I met Tim on a Facebook group. I'm not even sure which one, about a year or so ago, right? That's right, yeah. It must be 18 months, if not two now, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. The Facebook groups have really taken off, and... When I put together the courses, I started thinking of people that I that talk about certain things, and Tim has always been one to talk about teams a lot. So when we start putting the courses together, I was like, Tim, you got to be on board here because you're actually utilizing it. And I think I read that you said that you offered to all of your clients now that you set up with Office 365. Yeah, it's, it's our go-to product now. We As we install any machine or we migrate any tenant to Office 365 by default now, we install Teams, set it up um, on each client machine so that it opens when people start the machine, which try and for, not force them, but try and get our clients to use it. Um, when we do SharePoint migrations, we uh, set SharePoint up now so that you can either use your document libraries via Teams or you can use them old school via the OneDrive Sync client. It's entirely up to the users how they use it. Some people want, a new, want the new stuff with Teams and all that extra functionality, which is great. Some people are a bit more old school, and they want to use it the SharePoint way. That's yeah. also fine. So everybody has the best of both worlds, and you can access it however you want. So, yeah, that's part of the resistance the clients give is that they don't want to learn the new technology. And the thing is, it's, it looks really cool. I personally haven't gotten involved enough to, to train it and sell it and support it. So that's going to be real important with these demo. That we're going to do a few of these, I think, with the teams, but is to teach techs how to – tell their clients this is the new thing this is how we do it and start using it it's great like you know yeah. we need to learn from you though <laughs> so those that are watching i'm sure like me but deer in the headlights what's going on i uh, know it's a, it's all easy once you know how it's all the, the key thing is to actually use it and um, uh, as you were saying before anybody says well i haven't got a team how can i use teams mm. you don't have to have a team to use teams uh, i use it on my own and it's literally, I, I have a, a team per client or a team per project or a team for finance and I organize my data that way. So I have um, client A um, that has a team which has their planner, has their OneNote, has their files, has all the information about them. Uh, I have another team for my accounts which has all my accounts information, 2016, 2017. So I categorize them into years. It's just a way of organizing all the information. Uh, but it works really, really well. Very yeah. Flexible. I've launched it up, and, and before I met you, I launched it up and played with it a bit, and I was like, it's just a chat. You know, I didn't know. But then as I started playing with it, I started seeing that, actually, I think they've added some features on since I started. Uh, it was well over a year ago. I know they have. Yeah. The, so just on its one year, last month was its one-year anniversary. So, oh, sorry, three weeks ago was its one-year anniversary. Right. Thing. 11th of March, I think it was. So, but we've been using it now for about uh, 18 months, nearly two years, because we get the, the first releases for everything as most IT people do. Right. Um, well, not me. <laughs> I don't. Fantastic product. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? So, um, just to let everybody know that Tim and I, he invited me to join his team initially because you could do that now. I think that was one of the big obstacles mm -hmm. is that you're all alone, but now you can actually invite other people to participate in your teams outside of your domain. So we're going to cover that too in the training. And that I think um, all the students who are watching this, when you're done here, there's going to be a link at the bottom where you can come and join the teams that is for the office365courses.com demo. And we can all participate in the team and everybody can ask questions and play around and do stuff. It's just for demo purposes only. So I don't really think we could break too much, right, Tim? <laughs> no. No. You can't break it. People that can break it are, are you, Lisa, because you've got, you've got the power and the admin. <laughs> right. That's all right. I got root. All right. Well, maybe we should get started here. Uh, do you want me to screen share and do all that stuff? You ready? All right. Ready, willing, and able. And I'm going to also, for anybody who's very new to Office 365, I'm going to launch the uh, how you log in and we're going to do another video, though, on how to set all this up. Tim is going to help with that video, too. 
But because um, some people that are watching mm -hmm. don't have any idea how to do any of this, so my best effort here to give a tutorial. And all right, hold on. Let me get this logged in quick here. Surprising how many people go, oh, I can set Office 365 up myself. I'm like, well, yeah, you can, but you need to set it up properly. Right. And to set it up properly can take two or three hours before you even start putting any emails in. Well, you know what the thing is, is that everybody does things differently. I've been doing it for years. And once you told me things that you do, I was like, I don't do that. That doesn't make me a bad technician. I've been just doing what I do. Definitely not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm almost logged in here. Hold on. Sorry, folks. I had a little crash here right before the video, so she's acting up. She's really acting up. I can't get my thing here. Hold on. Okay. I had the fall craters update happen last week, so <laughs> that was a joy. Oh, last week. Wow. That was like a six-hour. Uh, yeah, I was like, when's this ever going to end? <laughs> Never. Finally, it did. Okay, I think I can share here in just a second. Okay. All right, so we are spring logged in. What's that? The spring one's nearly here. Never mind the fall one. Oh, I don't even know how I didn't get this before, but I'm not a Windows person. Like, I don't really participate in all that, so. Okay, see my screen? Yep, I got you. Okay. Great. So for those that are logged in, you just uh, can go to outlook.office365.com. It takes you to the portal. And then up here is what's called the charms, Tim. Is that what you call it? Uh, I normally call it the waffle. I think that's what Microsoft kind of calls right. it as well because it looks like a waffle because it's got the nine dots. Always makes yeah. me feel hungry, though. Right. Well, I, I heard they're called charms. I just call it with my clients the, the nine okay. small buttons. <laughs> Yeah. They never know what I'm talking about. So anyway, when you're in here, this will constantly probably change because it just changed about a month and a half ago, but you need to go down to all apps. And down here is Teams. Now when you click that, it's probably going to launch the online version, which you can do, and you can also download the Teams here, which is the desktop app, right? That's right. It looks exactly the same. I'm actually yeah. quite surprised how similar it is now. I was actually with a client the other day, and I couldn't actually work out whether I was in the online version or I was in the installed version, and I couldn't tell the difference. It's that right. good these days. Well, I also put it on my phone, and the phone looks a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know what? It's it's. I think it's going to be cool. Um, all right, so I'm sorry you guys, it is being a little sluggish, but here's the basic setup now. So, Tim, do you want me to give you um, permissions? Yeah, go for it. If I can figure it out. Remote control and give it to you. All right, there you go. Okay, have I got control? Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm in. Okay, cool. So, um, first thing I'll walk through with you is... Um, how to create your first team. So there are other features. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Uh, there are other features in here, but let's dive straight in and create our first team. This is a blank tenant, which we've not created any before. Um, so as it says here, to start, create a team here. So we can click join or create team. And it gives us an option to create a team. Great. So, uh, then you have the next screen, which is to give the team a name and a description. So, as I said before, this could be for a marketing team, it could be for a finance team, it could be for directors, or whatever you decide, and however you decide to structure your business. The key thing before you start using Teams is to sit down with your business and work out your business structure. So you may organize your business in a certain way. I, I have a client which, uh, they're a care home, and they, um, previously they've had finance and uh, medical information in different sections on their, um, on their files. What they had underneath each one of those was medical information for client A, client B, client C, client D, or resident, whatever you want to call them. Um, 
and they said, well, it doesn't work because we've got to jump from here to here to here, different folders to find um, the contact information for one of their clients, and then they've got to go to a different folder to find the uh, medical information, and they're constantly jumping from place to place to find information. So what we did for them was we said, right, let's turn that it on its head. So we create a team for each one of their clients or residents, whatever you want to call them, and then underneath that, we can then store information, um, whether it be uh, medical information or contact information or whatever, whatever, however you want to structure it. So you really do need to start from the top with your business before you start jumping into Teams and putting information in there. Because once you've started with it, if it's not right for your business, it's a right pain in the backside to actually okay. then re-engineer it, take that data out and put it in, in the right way. So start with your um, um, with your management team and then work from there. And obviously, these are the kind of things that we do a lot. So we can assist you with those kind of discussions because we've had the pitfalls and we know what works and what doesn't work. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to start off with, um, let's say, finance. Okay. So. Yeah, let me just tell you, Tim, that if I had a, a big enough uh, sale for this, I would be giving it to you. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm going to learn it. I'm like, oh, yeah, if a big enough company needed this, that'd be something I'd have you do. Yep. Okay. It's, it's well worth having a professional doing it because we know how it works. We'll do it right, right. the first time. And it saves you time in the, in the long run. Right. In yeah, I mean, most, Sorry, of my, most of my clients are one to five people. So for me, teams, I'm just letting folks know that mine would be one team probably with five people chatting all day. That's yep. really what my clients that have teams now do. So those that are listening, you know, smaller companies aren't going to have many departments. They're going to have just one single slot of chatting, and that's it. There we go. Yeah, this is uh, – yeah. go ahead. Okay, no, yeah, you can do that, or like I say, it's, it's good to actually section this data up, because obviously in the US, you guys don't really need the new GDPR regulations, but obviously we're in Europe, because we're in the UK, um, we need to heavily adhere to all the new General Data Protection Act regulations, and um, it's a way of sectioning that data up, so that you can then easily organize that data, for example, in finance, you may well have a section that says 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, so that you know that that data pertains to that month. When you need to then remove that data from your business, it's very, very easy to find that data and remove it, as opposed to what a lot of companies do. They just have a folder called finance, and then they just dump data in big wadges of files in one place. So the key thing for businesses these days is to separate and segregate your data so that it's in smaller chunks so it's easy to manage. The last thing we would ever do, we would never do this, would be to what I call a lift and shift. So they have a file server which has got a general folder where all the data goes in and maybe one for finance because it's sensitive. We would never just pick that data up and then dump it straight into Teams. It would just break and it wouldn't work. So the key thing is to sit down with a business, work out what they want, how they want to structure it, get rid of all the dross and all the old data, archive it off before we even start working with the data to migrate it into Teams. So it's having a, a good spring clean and a good clear out before you right. start using that data, really thinking about it. Well, let's do this. Let's scale way okay. back to small business level. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's cool. Because, because I, I think that, so let's not call it finance team. Let's call it, uh, you know, like the beta testers or something, because this is going to be one that people that are watching can actually okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Something just real simple here. Um, so w just for those that are watching, you know, the stuff Tim talks about is really not the stuff I do at my level. I don't mm -hmm. want to get people confused with, you know, listening and saying, oh, that's such high business stuff. It, this Teams is for every size business. Mm -hmm. And what Tim is saying is stuff that I would never do, ever, <laughs> because it's outside my scope. But, you know, a small business of five, yeah, what, what, what we're going to be covering in this video is the starter stuff, you know. So, so keep it uh, real basic here um, with the okay. – yeah. Because uh, you kind of fogged me there for a while. 
<laughs> okay. I'm saying that no, that's cool. in a good way, though, with this training, because a lot of people, when they're watching videos online, you know, they're, they're watching and they don't understand it. And this is why I'm hosting this. So everybody learning from a basic level up to that level that Tim's talking about, which is like bigger business. Like how many clients would be doing that that you just talked about? I would say I've just done it for a client that has five users. So I think this is really applicable for any size, really, because yeah. uh, you learn about yourself, but I've got oodles and oodles and oodles of data, which is just sloshing right. around file stores. So it's good for any size company, really, to have a bit of organization um, and a bit of a spring clean to look at their data right. and kind of go, well, okay, well, I want to section it all up um to kind of make it more organized so yeah you, you're right it's it, it is more tailored to the bigger businesses but i think it's still applicable for the smaller ones well i'm i'm thinking smaller businesses will will like a lot of the basic features of it that's what my clients are doing right now but i don't know enough about the basic features so okay all right, right. so let's make this so, team. let's do this then so be the testers so you've got a team name and you can give a description if you want to um, be a bit more flowery and kind of add a bit more information if you want. It makes things easier for people to find if they need to find it. Um, but if you're just using it for yourself, obviously, you know, just saying beta testers is just going to be sufficient. Yeah. Um, the next thing you'll see down here is the privacy. So you've got two options. You've got private or public. So private means that, as it says here, only team owners can add members. And then public, anybody in an organization can join. Okay. So what that in a nutshell means is that if it's private, the manager of the team has to delegate X, Y, and Z permissions to a person before they can access that data. So it's really used for um, people who have financial information, et cetera, which is very, very sensitive, which you don't want anybody okay. else looking at. And then public one means that anybody in your organization can access that information. It might be uh, a marketing team or something like that. But if it's just for single users, it's really, you don't really have any problems selecting uh, okay. either of these. Really. So we're just going to go public on that one. No, wait, 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 wait. Is the public one where you can invite other people from other domains in? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so this is the next screen now. So we can actually now start adding people into this team. So if you had multiple people in your business, you can just type in uh, Fred, for example. But we can't find Fred because we don't have a person in our business called Fred. Um, right. So if I wanted to now share this with an external person, so I'm going to share this with your uh, Call That Girl account, Lisa. Does that work for yeah. you? Yeah, it's Lisa at callthatgirl.biz. That, that, that. Oh. Right. <laughs> There you go. Oh. Tell me about it. That's my life. Leg. You can never type when people no. are watching. Oh, no. <laughs> when I'm with clients and it's doing it, I'm just like, yep. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to need to add on um, some external sharing on this for the time being because it doesn't right. sound that's been allowed on this well, side. That's, that's what we all want to learn. I'm going to tell you, Tim, that yeah. this team's training – I have a feeling it's going to be a few sessions. Oh, there will. There will. <laughs> um, <but laughs> if it was allowed, what we'd get here, we'd get the ad button, and it would actually okay. then say, you're adding this person from outside your organization. Okay. It's very, very clear that uh, what you're doing is getting people outside of your business access to this type of data. So, Well, I'm glad that happened so people can see that. Exactly. We'll show so them how to do it right. Program. Okay. So as it says here as well, you can have people, groups, distribution lists from your organization as well. Okay. So if you wanted to do that. Okay, so we now have our first group. You can see down here, beta testers. Uh, so starting from the left here, we've got the three dots here. So it gives us the options. So in here, we can add a manager team, add a channel, we'll come on to that in a second, add members, leave the team, edit the team, and they get a link to the team and also delete it as well. So first thing let's go into is manage team, which gives you the settings for it. It shows you who has access to the team as well. So we should now be able to go and add this from here. Uh, so Lisa 
at all that. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, mm. Okay, yeah, it's still it's not allowing us. We might, yeah. need, we might need to go and activate it in the back end for external right. usage. We've not gone and done this. This is just out of the box setup, this is. So we've not actually done any extra settings in here, so we might need to go and do that in the admin side, which if we hopefully will get signed to go and have a look at. So we can add people in here externally and internally. Um, the other things that we can do in here is go into settings. So you can add a team picture in here. Now, if you have a lot of teams, they do start to yeah. drop off the bottom and they're very, very difficult to see what they're about. So what I do, I have uh, for each one of my clients, I have their logo for their business as the picture. Nice. So that I can very easily see on the left hand side a little avatar so I can very easily find the business when I need to when I need to do that. So okay. all you do is change picture, upload the picture, and it will then change. I have found actually you have to do it twice for some reason. So you oh, click no. upload and then yeah, click upload, select the picture and it doesn't do it, you go back in a second time and it then works. No idea why. Well, there okay. you go. And then come down, we've got member permissions. So I'm now set up as the owner of this team. So in here, you have member permissions. So as I add members into the team, this is what tells the system the permissions for those members. So this is actually quite important because your members could, in theory, delete the whole team, delete the information in that team, and if you've got a lot of information that it could really cause you problems. All right. Um, so we always recommend making sure that your Office 365 is backed up. Um, and I know we've got some partners that we work with that do all the backups, etc. cetera. Um, as yet, I've not found any company that will do an online backup which incorporates Teams. It will do SharePoint, it will do OneDrive yeah. and your emails, etc. But as far as I'm aware, I don't think, I don't know if you know anybody, Lisa, but um, there is nobody out there at the minute that is backing up Teams. They're all saying, yes, it's coming, but there's nobody there at the minute. So just be a little bit careful about all the information you're putting in there because if something was to go wrong, you wouldn't have any backups anywhere. Right, and I think based on the, um, the comparison product, which was Slack, the uh -huh. Slack allowed you to have an archive if you paid so they had their own internal backup system um this of course you know i'm thinking that some of the big products will eventually incorporate it but to me here's, here's what i'm telling people my clients is it's just for chatting chatting sharing anything you work in like sharepoint which we'll get to that'll be in sharepoint you know so that's that can be backed up with products now though so um, it doesn't at the minute. Uh, it's a bit strange because when you create a team, it creates it in SharePoint, but it's not an official SharePoint right. library. So right. it's a bit of a weird situation at the minute. You can put retention policies on um, your Office 365 tenant, which we'll cover in another video, um, to cover the retention of that data within Teams. So it's protected from that perspective. But if you wanted an external backup disaster recovery for your Teams and your SharePoint, et cetera, the current backup systems that we use don't cover Teams. Right. No. We'll, we'll cover the retention in another video. Sounds good. So anyway, under that member per permissions, what's funny is I don't see a mute option. <laughs> you can't mute someone if they're getting out of hand. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. You've got moderation and things like that as well. But, um, and you can have there's down here there's right. usually uh, oh it's in the it's in the back end this is the settings for moderation so you can make sure that you're not having any swear words or any profanity or anything like that right. in mail things etc. So very quickly so member permissions very very careful about these so allow creating and updating channels allow members to delete and restore so I would normally go through for members and turn all these off right uh, admin only. Exactly. We normally produce an Excel spreadsheet for our tenants 
to our onboarding clients and we have them fill out one of these per team so that okay. we know how to just set each team up. It's a lot of work, but we need to get it right. Otherwise, data right. could go get lost when it shouldn't be. Okay. So, um, and then we come down to guest permissions, which is for external sharing. So allow creating, updating channels, and allow guests to delete channels. Obviously, by default, they oh, are. God, yes. Oh Shut yes. off. I don't even know why they're there. Because why would you ever want to have, allow guests to delete channels? No, no kidding. Idea. That's like uh, danger. <laughs> 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 And then there's other settings down here. Allow at team or at team name mentions. Okay. So you can. It's like the Twitter. Yeah. You've got yeah. At, and then you can mention somebody without having to go and find them in the list, etc. It just makes things a little bit quicker. Okay. And then down the bottom, the fun stuff. Oh, here we go. Here's the, here's the moderate moderates stuff down here. Um, so you can add a, allow people to put emojis and names and gifts, etc. Can be pretty cool. Some companies are a little bit sniffy and they don't want anybody to be able to put stuff like that in but it's the option for the company um so filter for appropriate content you can have moderate strict etc moderate okay. uh, and allow memes to be uploaded so you know what i found i liked which will show is i just like i'm a cut and paster and i like taking out screenshots and that is so awesome you can just put screenshots in there and it just pops in automatically exactly yeah okay so that's the settings for those so then we come across to apps. <coughs> um, so by default, you've got um, some apps here that you can add. So <clears throat> probably actually leave that for a second and, until let's go yeah. back in. You know what? Uh, well, stop for one second, though. Eventually, in another course, I'd like to talk about forms, and we have a trainer that's going to be doing OneNote. So. Okay. Uh, I don't have anybody for planner, so if anybody's watching and knows planner, wants to participate, and I don't even know what stream is, so <laughs> another product I'm not aware of. They yeah, keep adding um, them all the time. They do. This is this is the great thing and also the bad thing of Microsoft. Microsoft keep on adding new stuff all the time, which is fantastic, right. but everything keeps moving. Yeah, well, we could, uh, if you ever wanted to get dangerous and go to that go to store button, boy, there's a big surprise in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been in there. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so that is the, that's the configuration of each one of the teams up here. Cool. So next we have a concept of a channel. So think of a channel as a subfolder. So you've got a, a map drive with a subfolder below, okay. uh, below it. So you could have beta testers, um, and then underneath you might have beta testers, um, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. So I would now, um, if I wanted to go add another channel. So why are we adding a channel here first? So let's, let's okay. cancel that for a minute. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, what I'd like to see while we're in there is this is what I don't understand. So beta testers is the channel, is the team name. General yep. is a sub you know, it's like a folder. Mm -hmm. So that there, let, let's cover what's in this first. See that? Let's cover right. this stuff. Okay. So within general, you've got conversations. So this works very, very similar to okay. Facebook. If you use Facebook, you can use this. Um, gotcha. So you can, uh, hi, Lisa. Um, what's happening today? question mark and that will show as you can see down here yeah you got yeah. a little like you would do a notification on your whatsapp or your facebook etc if there's something new in that channel and you're subscribed to that channel you'll actually get the notification to say oh there's something new you need to go and check it right so right. it's very very handy you can also do other things like we've seen before you can add gifts in and you can search for them and oh you got to be kidding it's like Facebook, yeah. but for Office 365, it's crazy. Yeah. I didn't even click on that before. Uh, now I'm seeing all the stuff at the bottom: stickers, camera, um, the attachments. What's the What's the three bubbles do? Uh, That's just right options. Oh, more stuff. Okay, cool. More stuff. 
Yeah, so you can embed YouTube videos directly in, you can do a Wikipedia search, weather and stocks and all, all that kind of thing. So this is kind of where, here's what I'm going to be doing is, you know, I do simple stuff for my clients. I show them this. Um, that I did not know about. I can tell that the clients I've seen do with this, they are strictly all chatting about work. Even though mm -hmm. Microsoft adds on all this fluffy stuff, it, honestly, my people are talking about work and they're not really using that. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Keep them busy. All right, exactly. so... Okay, well, that's good to know. I never even paid attention to that down there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you can also then add in um, attach files. Yeah. We're so not clicking can... any of those. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. <laughs> but, so okay, yeah, and I see that they have the OneDrive attachment. So that OneDrive, you'd have to have, does that take you online to OneDrive, or does it take you to your computer's OneDrive? I'll take you online to OneDrive. Okay. And then you can also add in extra file link files from other teams as well if you wanted to do that why you want to do that i don't know okay well one thing i'll i'll just quickly explain to people that are new to this is onedrive and sharepoint which are going to be covered in another course are very you know it can be very confusing um sometimes like a lot of people don't think they talk to each other but i i'm pretty firmly believe that they do mm -hmm. yeah do. and onedrive is kind of like where onenotes directory lives correct Yep. Yep. So, you know, you got to be careful sometimes. You might have data crossing a lot of these things over. So, you know, I'm pretty sure if you back it up in OneDrive or use the OneDrive, it's it's backed up with their with their stuff there. But, uh, it is, yeah. yeah. It is, but the, 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 the Teams, though, is designed to be, as to use a Microsoft word, yeah. a single pane of glass. Right. So, all of your data, wherever it lives at the minute, what Teams does is to give you a single pane of glass to view all that data, whatever it is, in one place. It pulls everything together. The only thing it doesn't really pull together is your emails. Right. All right. So uh, what's up with that files button up there next to conversation? Oh, next to conversations. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So cover conversations. We now go on to files. So files is, as it sounds, where you store your files. So, nice. Nice. Yeah. So the back end of this is SharePoint. When you create a team, it creates you, in essence, a document library within uh, your SharePoint site. And then this is just looking at SharePoint. So as you can see here, there is even really? open in SharePoint. I think we could do that because yeah. we're logged in. Okay, so we can now go directly into SharePoint. There we go. Here's SharePoint. Oh, and it's first time we've logged in, so we're getting all the bump. Okay, so from that point, you can do whatever you would normally do in SharePoint. If you wanted to, you can open a new, create a new file, you can upload files, you can share files, etc., etc. And you can also synchronize the file, which is the feature I use the most is to actually synchronize the files yeah. in Teams to your local computer, which is what everybody wants. Okay, um, well, let's hold on. Let's stop a second here. So, so just to let folks know that we do have a basic SharePoint class coming. Mm -hmm. So that's entirely different than what we're talking about. But in the basic one, I do cover, and you might be helping on that one too, I do uh, cover the sync, which synchronizes it with your Windows folders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So what did you just say then? You said that you like this because it syncs all your team stuff to your computer? Exactly. Well, that, so, isn't that literally, you could back that up yourself then, manually? If you wanted to, yeah. Yeah, Maybe that's you your backup. Know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll so, fill this up in time here with a bunch of data and we'll test that. Yeah, we can add some, we can add some data yeah. now. So you don't have to go into SharePoint to create a file. Okay. Is you can create one directly here. So we oh, can look at that handy little online thingy. Uh, new document, create it. So this is still within Teams. We're not touching. We can actually close this now. You know, we're not. We're not. We're not touching SharePoint at all at the minute. So okay. here's your So this is editing it on online. Oh, look at that button, start conversation. Boy, they just want you to stay active in this online all day long. Exactly. 
And if you wanted to, you could actually now edit this directly within Word to give right. you full functionality if you wanted to do that. Okay. So I can put some whatever information in here. And as you can see now, it's yeah. saving, which is a fantastic now feature across the whole Office 365 suite. And it also appears in Teams. It's the constant saving of your documents. So if okay. your machine crashes and you haven't saved, not a problem. It's probably, you may well have lost two or three seconds worth of time on your documents. Yeah. Incredibly powerful. So, you know what? I think this is where I'm still an old school scaredy cat to take it off my computer and go online only. <laughs> Um, I know a couple of people who don't have any installed applications on their computer. They just use everything in, within the web browser. Oh, well, that's that's what they want for 2019, I think. Mm -hmm. It's going that way. Oh, yeah. It's going that way. All right. Continue okay. on. So we've now created the document. We can now just close it. And there's your document. So that is now right. a document created within Teams. Yeah. And you can open it in SharePoint, right? Yeah, if we go to SharePoint. There we go. Document. And if you wanted to, you could then hit sync. That would synchronize it to your local machine with OneDrive, and you'd be able to edit that document on your local computer, which then talks to, uh, to SharePoint, which then talks to Teams. It all right. flows together. That's right. So, so okay. if you've got somebody that wants to use Teams, they can use Teams to edit the documents. If you've got somebody that wants to use OneDrive to edit their documents, they can use that. You can edit it on your mobile, you can edit it on your tablet, wherever you want. All works from the same place. All right. Okay, so we'll get rid of SharePoint. Um, so this is how your files work then. Gotcha. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You can, can you also that? share things from here as well. So if I select that. Oh, man, there's even more. Even more, yeah, there's even more and more and more. Well, that's a good thing about Microsoft. There's always nine ways to do something. Exactly. <laughs> it's also a bad thing as well. But look at that. You just clicked a button. There's like more options. I'm like, come on. This is getting confusing. Let me ask you this. So that what I think a lot of people want to do is that get link right above there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gives you the short link. Oh, it gives you the long link. That's the cool. long link. Yeah. And you've got the option to create the link for Teams Yikes. or create the link for SharePoint. When are they going to have a bit.ly? Their own. <laughs> You never know. That's horrible. Well, anyway, for those that uh, do a cheat like I do, I make everything a bit.ly bit link because I can't send that to people. That's just too much. It's B-I-T dot L-Y. Mm -hmm. That's a shortener. I think yeah. there's a shortener, though, in one of these products. I swear I saw it. Uh, you might be able to add it in a bit.ly in to shorten your documents automatically. I don't know. Maybe yeah. someone can have a, have a check and find out, have a play. All right. All right, well, if you were to take that and put it into a browser, mm -hmm. which, copy it in, and go throw it out. Uh, here, I'll do it. Can't you open that? Oh, uh, yeah. I think I'm just going to fire it up right there. Oh, shit. Oops, darn. Didn't mean to swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this now we'll fire that up and look at that huge link. So it doesn't it open up in SharePoint. It opens no, up in Teams. Up in Teams, yeah. Because okay. you're signed in, it's remembering you because it knows who you are. It's right. opening up in Teams. If you were to open it in, in private. Do you need to make this over here then? Uh... No, that's all. So get a link. We've already got the link pasted. So if we go, if I borrow your mouse, will we sack this? Yeah. Let's do, oops, let's do cancel on that. Let's do it in private. One cognito in frame. So we're going to paste that in there. Uh, it's not going to actually sign in. It's not a public link. So you know what, though? I don't want to get off course too much, but the SharePoint offers the, the open to the public link. Yeah. Well, this one still keep it in the in-house. Yeah, what you'll find is Teams is very, at the minute, is very designed for internal communications. Okay. The external communications isn't quite there yet. It's getting there, but it's not quite yeah. there. That's SharePointy. It is, yeah, which is why okay. we have the links through to SharePoint, because then you can do right. more things and stuff with it. That's cool. You know what? I think that um, the SharePoint, I've, I covered that in my thing. 
Mm-hmm. Sharing outside of the company. Okay. Okay. So, so, what is next? Uh, wiki? Files Wiki. Yeah. I'm, oh, yes. I, I think you're the expert on wikis here, Lisa. Um, mm. I, yeah, I've, I've used them a little bit, but to be honest with you, I don't really get them. Well, here's the thing is that wiki is something I just saw recently. I don't know how long it's been there. You know what I mean? So here's what we can put out to the folks that are listening is let's learn this wiki a little bit and use this as a knowledge base area for us as a group, okay? Yep. So once Tim adds you to this group, let's put out general questions that we have so then people can go and search it and learn it. Mm-hmm. I'd That's love good. to have my own wiki for Call That Girl because not only do I have hundreds of blogs out there, I need a lot of fast things. And now that's what excited me when I first saw the wiki. I was like, oh, but then I don't want that external to other people and my clients. It's just for me yep. you know, or my own team, which is me. Mm-hmm. All right. So we'll, we'll, we don't need to cover that. We can uh, use that as a group exercise. That's fine. First learning uh, lab. Our first learning lab, Tim. Yeah, definitely. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're in this together. There's a lot of courses. There's a lot of courses. Oh, and a lot yeah. of the midnight oil, I think. Well, you know, what's funny is everybody that's watching, you would not believe how this course thing started. It started off with a very few ideas, and then it just started gaining momentum. And mm-hmm. everybody that's involved in the training is like, I want to do this then and that then. And we've got so many that we want to do that it's almost like probably half a year's worth. Easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's easy, half a year's worth. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what's that plus sign do then? Plus sign, we can now add a tab. So, oh, my God, that's all the fun and the apps thing that I, I, I've seen many it, times. This is where the fun starts. So yeah. the one I use the most here is OneNote. So okay. that's obviously being covered in another area. But what I normally do is for each client, I will have a OneNote with all my notes in for that client, which is obviously shared with anybody else that can see it, uh, and then have all the files and files, etc. So okay. I use mostly OneNote with this, but there's no reason why you can't add in whatever you want in here. Um, one of my clients, what they do is they're a, a PR company, so they want to keep tracks on what their clients right. are doing on social media. Um, they will, wherever I can find it, Twitter somewhere. Oh, where is it? Yeah, you had us do Twitter. Yeah, we did. So you can add you can add Twitter into your feed. Actually, I think that's in that's in conversations. You add that in, so you can add it add Twitter in, so that anytime a tweet appears for company A or there's a specific hashtag, oh. it actually puts it directly into a conversations. Oh, so that's how people can keep track of tweets and other yeah, things exactly. that get happening out there. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So if you wanted to do that, say if you have to go and check your Twitter or check your Facebook, that type of thing, it can pull that information into your team. Nice. So again, Very one cool. single pane of glass where all the information lives. Well, let's see okay. if we can wrangle this a lot. I mean, but, it's a lot. So you can do other things like if you've got another SharePoint site that isn't part of your team, uh, right. but you want to pull that in, you can pull that in so you can see it. Uh, you can add streaming, which is your video streaming. You can just add in a website if you wanted to do that. If you had your own intranet or your own CRM system, you can add that in. So when you click it, you see that web page embedded into your right. team. All kinds of things, all kind of cool stuff that you can do. Okay, so let's just recap this little area here. The beta testers, the general is where all the – if you had a small company to just get started – this is what I would do if you are setting up your first company is create one thing first. Get folks used to it. Have them practice. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of testing, 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 practicing. Then once you're 100%, then start doing what production mode. Um, I have a lot of clients that will jump into something and do it all wrong. Then we have to backtrack. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want to, especially if you're a new technician to selling this too. Like I remember the first client I set it up with, I said, um, I don't even know what this thing is, but I heard about it and I set it up and he like within a day was like, I want my whole company on it right now. And they all use it. And I was like, wow, I want you to teach me. (laughs) She's way too busy. But the thing is another company's doing it. And then I just got a handful of other people. So it's kind of like they might be resistant 
But if you set it up and give them a little quick demo, say, let's yeah. just throw a couple people in there. You know, they're paying for it already. It takes you 15 minutes to set it up. It's not like it's an hour and a half of training. The basic chat features is really cool alone, you know, and, and I like that. So if anything, don't, don't think it's overwhelming. And Tim, in the beginning, when you started saying all that other stuff, that is like another session alone. You could probably talk about large scale. But uh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Basic things. Okay. Sell it and support it. So we're good here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've already been in it, but I just learned a lot alone here. So um, what's, uh, what's next? Okay, so what's next? So we've got, so we've, got the, we've covered this. We've covered your, your channels. Um, let's get rid of this for a minute. Okay, um, so generally the interface here, what you've got is you've got you at the top here. You can set yourself available. This again is for more for bigger businesses. If it's just you, right. it's probably applicable. But you can set your status available, busy, do not disturb, etc. Um, you can go into your own settings. So if you want some high contrast, if your visibility is not yeah. quite as good, those are really ugly. Yeah. It's like, don't give us any fun options. <laughs> um, or you can change your region obviously this one's right. in the US at the minute but if you had uh, you're working with people overseas you could then they could then set theirs to be UK yeah. you could be US so you've got um, where the language you need to be in and then in here you've got your notifications so that if someone mentions you it pops your message some people like lots of notifications some people want to turn them all off right and you can get that from here um, one of the newest features that is has come in the latest release is the search bar at the top so there's all kinds of things that you can do in here so you can set your availability you can do it's kind of like a powershell -y kind of oh it's a little backslash so let me ask you yeah. this so once we get the wiki rolling yep that's our search perfect exactly and that search will search within teams cool I like that so people watching let's fill up that wiki Mm -hmm. Even if it's just like little things, we just want it populated so we can use these features. Definitely. So if I click demo in there, or oh, what's it called? Uh, oh, we've got one called beta, haven't we? Difficult to search, but there's not much data in here. Here we go. Right. <laughs> we have uh, nothing. Or beta testers. Um, or if I want to set my availability to be away. Oh, nice. Yeah. It is so, a little power shelly, a little backslash. Is. You can see now it's set, set you to be away up here. So I do that again, and I can put myself available. Hmm. Some people like it, some people don't. It's just extra features, and you can you can do things however you want. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, right. So that's covered this interface here. You've also got here where you can start a new chat. Now, you might be private, right? Yes, it might be difficult to start a chat, unfortunately. Until we get uh, people in there? Say again? Until we get people in there? Yeah, once we've got some people in there, we'll be able to start to chat more. So the, the basics of it is you can do a one-to-one -one chat now between me and another person or Good. me and a team. Well, once we have some more people in there, then we can practice that, too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, you've also got a concept now of bots. I think everybody's probably heard of bots. Microsoft pushed them quite a lot. Um, and I've played around with them a bit. They're, they're pretty cool. Um, so you can actually ask bots certain questions. So this is T-Bot, which is for Teams Bot. So I can now go, um, do, 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 um, who is, oops. Huh? So it just adds a little bit of intelligence in and you can then do a little bit. It's not brilliant, but you can see where Microsoft are going with it. Oh, they're building up their AI so they can t keep yeah. our data? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Keep on getting that data. Exactly. Okay, well, you know what? I, I always wondered what that thing did, and now I know it's just uh, collecting the data. Um, 
Yeah, I wonder if you can turn that off. That's what I would do. Can turn bots off in the in the back end, uh, but there's also okay. um, there's also things you can add in from the store. Like uh, the one I've tested is kayak, uh, which gives you you can say give me a flight from London Gatwick to gotcha. Barbados uh, or London Gatwick to Vancouver or wherever. It will actually then instead of you having to go to the kayak website and find those details. Yeah. Within, if you're chatting within a team organizing a, uh, a trip, a business trip somewhere, and you go, okay, when are the flights? You can actually bring kayak into the conversation and go, kayak, uh, give me availability on five seats from Gatwick to Barbados on the 5th of December. It will then go and search and say, yep, these seats are available for you. And it's all recorded within the team conversation. So as opposed to having to go and find the details on the kayak website, cut and paste it into an email, send yeah. it all around to everybody. It's all done there right in front of them. Microsoft's ethos is to get rid of email. I know. It's far too heavily used. Even though it's like their number one product in the whole wide world. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come on. Okay. All right. So let's hit uh, Beck. You know, here's what I want to show folks is that activity button up there. Mm -hmm. um, I believe from what I remember with the clients that have a lot, that's a little notification area mm -hmm. uh, at the top there, activity. Let's just try and there. get rid of this. Oh, yeah, going? what happened to our store? It's like, yeah. like, no exit out. Let's go back to page. There you go. Okay, so activity is where you'll, this is kind of like what I tell my clients is when they first launch up teams, they're going to see the activity. It'll have da-da-da-da-da, probably a lot of stuff. Yep. And it's you generally if you're not in it all day and you take a day off, you're gonna have a lot of reading. Yep. So get used to that or just jump in the conversation and keep chatting away. Exactly. Uh, it depends on how your team does the how they figure it out. I know from what I've seen with my clients, a lot of them is just honestly, if they didn't have that chat, there would have been a hundred and fifty emails. It was totally. like, Hey, did you get that part number? Yeah, here it is. It's just just day to day work cool. It's exactly. not, and when you're sending emails and people have another email to read and then they have to filter it, delete it. And this, this is just, I've seen it work nicely with teams of people talking, just getting exactly. their job done. With all the spear phishing attacks nowadays with um, directors or financial people being emailed and new bank account details saying, play this, pay this immediately. There's yeah. actually in the news today, there was, um, I can't remember which football team it was, but there's an international football team that has actually now paid over £2 million for a player, and it was paid into a bank account which didn't exist and has now disappeared. They've lost £2 million from one phishing email. Yeah, well, I, I still have a, a, you know, a fancy for email because mm. I'm an email expert, <laughs> but I do see the value of these products yeah. because I see so much email clutter that I'm, I mean, I swear that uh, it's it's awesome for day to day business talk within a company. Yep, real nice. Also, if you're if you have a new member of staff that joins a business, joins a marketing team, right. as opposed to going, I'll send you all these emails to catch you up on what we're doing. Right. You add them to the team. They start at the top and just read down, and then they're immediately caught up. Yeah. Well, I don't think this. Um, well, anyway, each company, like I said, though, you need to test and get going slowly. Don't jump into everything at once. It's overwhelming yep. sometimes. But anyway, so here's the activity. This chat looks like that's the bot thing, which Tim said we can get rid of. Teams mm -hmm. here is where the basic chat is down here in general. And then meetings, which um, this I've already launched in my own teams before, and I don't like it because it shows everything of my calendar. And I already see enough of that all day. Um, files, this looks good. We got the new doc there. Mm -hmm. And just more appy things. Yep. So, Tim, so Tim, I think we're about ready to close out this first video. Uh, what else do you want to cover in the basics of it? Um, I think that's pretty much it. The, we have yeah. one thing I think we haven't covered is the video calling and the audio calling. Well, we could cover that probably quick. Okay, sure. Because you know what, I think uh, my clients like that whiteboard and they want to do the calling. So is this it down here? This is it now. It's probably okay. not brilliant to test it. We've only got one user in this tenant. Yeah. Um, so the, 
the ethos is that it's very similar to Skype. So Skype is actually being migrated into Teams in the, in the next What? Moment. No way. Yeah. They're not integrating yeah. another product into one. They are. They're getting rid of Skype. <laughs> <laughs> not surprised, but okay, well, let's do this. Let's actually save the uh, whiteboard and the camera for when we got some people in the team. That'd be cool. And maybe we can get some students be in camera with us to do a recording so we can watch it and record it. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Well, I really am hoping everybody jumps in and joins the teams and let's start getting into this. Um, if you're on the Facebook group, you know, the, and you, you want to talk about teams, let's try to bring it over here because the Facebook group is for everybody. The teams mm -hmm. here is just for the students and people who really want to learn and, you know, take, take a part, you know, or take advantage of this to learn it, to sell and support it, make some extra money, help people, right? Uh, extra money is always good. Well, yeah, I mean, just alone, uh, like I said, the simple stuff isn't a lot of training time, but the ongoing, I've had that one client, they've called me a few times, set it up for someone, give them a little training. They don't want to do the training themselves. Yep. So, works for me. Sure. Um, the only thing we haven't mentioned as well is that all the features you've got here, you can access on your mobile, Android, iPhone, um, on your tablet, wherever you are, and it all has very similar functionality. Yeah, I'm going to probably screen share it next time on my phone. It, You know, it looks a little different. Hey, I'm going to stop screen sharing here so we can talk on camera again. Um, the uh, On my teams on my phone, which I could show, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's kind of like conversation mode, and you'll see, here, I'll just do a little basic there. Eh, let's see. That's how it looks. Yeah, with that. Yeah. It's just like a it's just like, you know, chatting with yourself or whatever. Oh, my camera's getting all weird. Um sorry. Well, we're gonna be closing this out anyway, folks. So let me get my uh notes here. If you want to contact Tim for any training, Tim, give all your information. Okay, yeah. If anybody would like to contact me for any training, you can get me on Tim at nebulacloud.co.uk. And that is N-E-B-U-L-A-R-C-L-O-U-D dot co dot U-K. Or you can call us on Skype on the same email address. Or you can call us in the U-K if you'd like to do that, which is plus four four one six two five eight three seven nine nine zero. Or I'm assuming you can contact yourself as well, Lisa, if they're in the U.S. and want to call you direct and you can pass the details on. Yeah, Tim, you can, you can do private training for you or for the clients. And, um, man, I tell you, my computer's still being a little sluggish here. All right, cool. There's going to be some notes at the bottom of the course, too, just uh, get how to join the teams and whatnot. And I want to just take a moment to thank App River for sponsoring this course. And, um, and you can sign up down below also to get into, to talk to one of their sales reps to be a partner or a reseller. Um, there's more videos coming, you guys. Uh, I don't have the exact same, I don't know the exact one for next time, sorry. I have been, Tim and I spent a little time preparing for this today. We had some tech glitches. <laughs> yeah. I'm Seems not on my game. Glitches as well. well, we are going to do a full Office 365 setup, security, tenant branding, all the fun things that, you know, I just take five minutes to do. Tim can put hours into it, and we need to know all that because if, hey, if we do more, we can build more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Then we're going to have one with uh, partner sales versus reseller and versus CSP. And then uh, after that, we're going to do migration uh, talk about exchange manual using migration whiz and um, how to do a GoDaddy migration, which is there's a lot of important things you need to learn there. That course is going to be sponsored by migration whiz and you get three licenses free to test out their product on your own on your own tenant or on a client one if you got a small one. It's always good to, to dive in and practice and Adam is going to be doing that course and giving you a tutorial and uh, give you all the training on that. Migration Wiz is a, is a good product. I like it. I've used it for years. So after that we got seven or eight more in this first set and then more after that hopefully. So anything else there Tim? No, I think that pretty much covers it. All right, that's it gang. See you next course. Have a good one. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye.